Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to a blood splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And um, I'm Count Jacula. He's Count Jacula doing, <laughs> <laughs> doing his best Fred Gwynn impression. Because today we're going to talk about, well, technically, we are going to dig through the ditches and burn through, through the, the witches, witches while I slam in the back of my Dragula. Because today we're going to talk about Rob Zombie's The Monsters the latest Netflix remake of the Munsters sitcom, but as a movie. This is a movie that I wasn't sure how I felt going into it, because on one hand, I love Rob Zombie, yeah, and I look forward to every movie that Rob, Z Rob Zombie makes, uh, for better or worse. But on the other hand, his plan was to make a true, like, recreation of the original show right down to it being like a PG-13 kids thing. Yeah. And I wasn't sure how well Rob Zombie could pull that off, but I did know he loves the monsters more than anybody on the planet. Well, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of people were like, why is Rob Zombie doing this? I'm like, his biggest hit is a song about Grandpa Munster's car. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, like of, of course he likes the monsters. I do not realize this. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, kids got to get more culture. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I wasn't sure exactly, but I knew I was excited, but also worried. And then it got like, there was reports that it was supposed to go to theaters and then it was supposed to go to Peacock and then it ended up on Netflix. Now, according to Rob Zombie, none of that was true. It was always going yeah, to be on Netflix. Yeah, it was always going to be a Netflix movie. Apparently. So reporting was a bit was a bit confusing there. So I thought there was more production troubles than there ended up actually being apparently with this. But one thing I do know is that he originally wanted to shoot this in black and white and they said no, so he shot it in color. And uh, so it came out last week and we decided to sit down and watch it. And uh, guess what? I loved it. It's it's a lot of fun. It's not this now. This movie ain't gonna change your life. No, it is corny dad jokes for an hour and forty minutes. Yeah, yeah. This you movie know, like, is pure camp. It is pure cornball humor. Yeah, it is cheesy as all hell. It barely has a plot. Like yes, it, it feels like a bunch of like vignettes from like the Munsters show, just strung together loosely. Yeah, with... yeah, yeah. To be utterly fair, most episodes of the Munsters have yeah. more of a plot than the movie. Strung together loosely with scenarios that you could argue are plot, but are really more like sitcom scenarios, basically. Yeah. But despite that, and despite the fact that it feels like it runs a little bit longer than it should, this movie charmed the hell out of me. Like, oh yeah, it made me yeah. feel it like a charming kid. movie. It, it's yeah. cute. It made me feel like a kid watching Munsters rerun late at night when they would do that thing where it's just like, oh, we have this block where no one's supposed to be awake, so let's show like eight episodes of the Munsters in a row. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I, I'll say this: it's not. Well, it's not as good as the Barry Sonnenfeld. No, like. Adam's family well, movie the, the at Adam, all. It's his, not, nowhere close. His Adam's family is the gold standard because it wasn't just like a recreation. He actually updated a lot and changed a lot. And some yeah. of the things he changed became so popular that people forget that he changed that. He wasn't just like recreating the original show. He was taking a lot of elements of it and updating it for a modern audience. And also partially making fun of it while still loving it. Oh um, yeah. This is a lot more genuine than that. This does not have that 90s self-aware snark that No, not at all. Not at all. The Adams Family 90s movie has or the Brady Bunch movie yeah. from the 90s either. This is way more like him genuinely recreating the feel of the original series. Yeah, like this would I'll say this. I feel like this should have been the Monsters reboot that they did in the 90s. Oh yeah. You know, because like this actually, unlike that show, yeah. this actually feels like the Monsters. It, it kind of does. Even though there are some things that are a little different. For example, the- well, I'm talking about the Monsters today, by the way, because I realized there are actually like three reboots in the 80s. Yeah, there's there's been yeah. various reboots. The most interesting one to me was the one that happened in like the early 2000s that didn't get past the pilot. Mockingbird Lane. Oh, Mockingbird Lane. That looks so cool. That was, it was one of those. Well, yeah, like, it was completely different. It was complete, yeah, it was like, <laughs> I, I'm i okay with watching this show, but it is not the monsters. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of doing its own thing. But I think people forget how people reacted to Mockingbird Lane. Most people got mad that it wasn't true 
to the original uh, show when yeah, that came out. Yeah. It's now, and I, ha- and I got that. It now has a cult following, like people like me who really dug it, but at the time it didn't. I have a feeling the Munsters is gonna have an interesting, this Munsters is gonna have an interesting reaction because I think there's a lot of people who are gonna get it at first, but I think it's gonna develop more of a cult following as time goes on because it reminds me of two movies that came out in the past that did their damnedest to recreate an old style almost to a fault and and modern audiences kind of immediately rejected them for doing it. Yeah. And they went so far with it that over time they developed true cult followings. The first one is Popeye. Yeah. The uh, Popeye movie from the, was it the seventies or eighties? That was the eighties. That was the eighties. Yeah. That was like 80s Which did such a good job of recreating the feel of the Popeye cartoons, but live action that people looked at it and go like, this feels kind of old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And, and people didn't get it. But over time, Popeye has a really good following. At yeah, this point. yeah. Because the well, the thing that was really cool about the Popeye movie with Robin Williams yeah. is that it was a direct adaptation of uh, Thimble Theater, mm-hmm. where Popeye first appeared, where he was the main character of that comic strip mm-hmm. before the, 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 the animated cartoons. Yeah. You know, um, that's why... You know, there's all that stuff about Pappy and you're like, wait, who's Castor Oil? They're like, yeah. it's Olive Oil's brother. Those are all from the from the newspaper comic. Yep. You know, um, I knew that. But then again, I was a real I was a nerd yeah. at seven. The other you know? th- the other movie this really reminded me of when I was watching it. And I, I think the reaction to it is going to be very similar is the Wachowski Speed Racer movie. Yeah, because the Wachowski Speed yeah. Racer movie, when it came out, was hated utterly despised now it has a very strong cult following of people who kind of recognize that actually this is an incredibly faithful recreation of that original show yeah like like they amp some things up with some of the wachowski style um but so does rob zombie with this movie oh yeah totally um but overall like all the shit that's there that's kind of goofy and dated that's all from the original cartoon oh yeah no totally (laughs) like like my favorite part of that movie is still when fucking Pop spins a ninja over his head. Because yeah. I'm like, yep, all right, there we go, we're here. But the thing that connects all three of these movies, the Munsters, Popeye, and Speed Racer, is that they're not snarkily self-aware of themselves. No, no. They are very just genuine. genuine. And that genuineness is often rejected by audiences, especially if you're doing something so, so... Um, the word I was looking for here was kitsch. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is... Every you see the punchline of every joke coming a mile away. Oh yeah, yeah. You know you are. It's supposed to. It's weird because it is supposed to feel like you're watching the old sitcom as a modern audience. Member. Yeah, to the point where the movie ends and it feels like the end of a pilot. Yeah, it does. It does. You feel like, well, where's the next episode? Yeah. Oh wait, no, it is a movie, and that's not going to be for everybody. But I do think over time this is going to have a much larger audience than the initial reaction. Oh, because yeah. both of those movies had that same thing. Now, that being said, some of the criticisms I have seen from people who've watched this, like I can't entirely disagree with. Yeah, the plot is a little meandering. It doesn't actually have like a strong drive the way like the Adams Family do- movie does. Where no. It's like, oh, we're going to get that gold and then we're going to get them ejected from their house and then we're going to inherit it. Like there's like a yeah. there's like a plot that runs throughout the entire movie. This has a similar plot in it, but it feels like a subplot, even though it's kind of the main plot. Yeah, because it's all about how the monsters get from Transylvania to America. Yeah. And I I probably as like a script doctor would have adjusted that just to make give the movie more of a drive. But as it stands, like it didn't bother me too much. No. Because it felt so much like watching the original sitcom that like I just rolled. Yeah, the only the one of the the biggest problem that the Monsters has adaptation wise, Mm -hmm. and this has historically been the case, is those characters are such creations of their actors yeah. that it's really hard. It's so, really hard to have Herman Munster without Fred Gwynn. Oh yeah, that was the other thing I wanted to mention that's a little different. Like Herman Munster in this, he does a good job with the mannerisms, but his voice is so different from Fred Gwynn, it feels like a slightly different version. Of yeah, Herman. yeah, it does feel like a di- different version of Herman. You, you know, know, like he feels more like a, like, like a himbo. For like a yeah, yeah, yeah. It well, version. it's because he, he uh, uh, it's Daniel, uh, Roebuck? Uh, no, not Daniel Roebuck. Um, oh, he plays Grandpa, Yeah, right? the, Daniel Roebuck plays Grandpa. Uh, the guy who plays... Oh, oh, uh, uh, um, something Phillips? Phillips, yeah, yeah, Daniel Phillips. Yeah, 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 something Phillips. And yeah. he, his voice is very high-pitched, whereas yeah. Fred Grimm was very low. Yeah. And he... 
Fred Gwynn Didn't also had that like classiness to his voice. He did. Even though Herman Munster was kind of like stereotypical dumb TV dad. Yeah. He still had that like classiness to his voice. Whereas in this sh movie, Herman's voice matches his kind of dumb TV dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he, so he comes across way more himbo-ish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, uh, Sherry Moon Zombies playing Lily. Uh, she's doing more of an impression of Mary Tyler Moore. Oh, okay. Mary yeah, Tyler yeah. Moore. She's doing kind of a Mary Tyler Moore as opposed to a uh, Yvonne DiCarlo impression. Yeah. Grandpa's pretty spot on though. Like, <laughs> yeah, the only, Daniel Roebuck is kind of nailing it. He, he, he managed to make this grandpa his grandpa. Yeah. You know, because you weren't going to be able to be Al Lewis. Yeah, yeah. You know, but Daniel Roebuck really, really, really did a yeah. great job. Like, he's the one who felt the most natural. I really dug him. Probably the best out of the main cast. Because yeah. the main cast is Herman, Lily, and Grandpa in this. We do not yeah, get... Eddie's not born yet. Yeah, Eddie's not born yet, and we don't see their cousin, um, uh, Marilyn. Marilyn, yeah. yet. They have not been introduced. Like, it really it literally ends after they get their house, basically. Another thing I do kind of want to warn anyone going into this movie is that it is incredibly genuine. It is incredibly cheesy and campy. And it is also very much intended for children. Yeah. It's got that feel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is like um this is like Halloween town. Oh yeah. You know? Well, I was thinking like <laughs> for example, when we have scenes with like Richard Brake being the mad scientist creating a Herman oh, monster. Oh yeah. I was thinking about like like it kind of reminds me of the feel of like the Ernest movies when Ernest yes. would go inside his own head and he'd be like a mad scientist or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. It or feels like, like an that. alien conqueror. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yes. And Richard Brake <laughs> is giving a similar kind of over the top performance. Yeah. Richard Brake is great. He's he, not in this movie enough. <laughs> I know. Well, he plays like three different characters. Too. Oh yeah, he can, he plays he like plays Orlock. Like, yeah, he plays Count Orlock. Grandpa's trying to set Lily up with this Nosferatu. Mm -hmm. Raw two guy and mm -hmm. played by Richard Brake. He's and then he plays the guy who creates Herman. Herman's dad, basically. Yeah, Herman's dad, basically. Mm -hmm. And Richard Brake is just having a ball. That's the other thing. Everyone in this is intentionally over the top, like a sitcom. Yeah. Like everyone's doing their best sitcom accents. It was also really <laughs> nice seeing Sylvester McCoy as Igor. Oh my God. He was so awesome. <laughs> Sylvester McCoy is such a top notch actor. Even him going over the top feels like Oscar worthy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he's, he just steals every scene he's Every in. time he shows up, I'm like, he's going over the top as everyone else, but unlike everyone else, he feels like he's turning it into like a like a Shakespearean performance. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, hey, 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 sit back. Let me show you how it's on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> as cool as it would have been to see the black and white cut of this movie, and I still hope that someone lets him release a black and white cut at some point. Yeah. This movie is gorgeous. It's very like, colorful. Yeah, he he he's like, okay, if I can't do it black and white, then I'm gonna rob rob zombie it and make it super colorful. It's gonna have all the colors of like a rob zombie music video. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I love the cinematography in this. I write down to the fact that he obviously shot it at a higher frame rate to make it look like a sitcom. Yeah, and it looks so good. Yeah, you know? it looks like, like it, it looks like a sitcom. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but it looks like the the best looking sitcom you've ever seen. Like like best yeah. old sitcom. Not like modern sitcoms are shot on twenty four frames and look like movies. But like yeah. old school sitcoms. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. Like I was watching this, and every set I wanted, and I didn't just want the set. I wanted the set with the lighting <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know he also has like really cool like 60 psychedelic moments where he has oh, like them yeah. go to a club rave and he's like doing like the woo woo woo, 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 woo like, 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 like it's fucking austin powers yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but done way more genuine than austin powers because austin powers is very tongue-in-cheek and rob zombie he can put his tongue in his cheek like i've seen el super beast out not, oh, yeah. not with this no 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 this is just <laughs> pure like yeah we're just we're just doing this yo yep. you know have you seen movies like the Love Witch that recreate some of that old school 60s like look. This does some of that. Yeah. Like right down to the fact like when Lily and Munster see each other, like it'll cut to like one of those 60s colorful technical well, yeah, backgrounds. Yeah, it does the creep show thing. Yeah. Where it's like this comic book background, well, but it's well, lights going yeah, off. Exactly. You know? And so it's like the background with a bunch of hearts and shit like yeah. that. And it's just them on the background reacting to it. Like he does a lot of that and it looks good. I know a lot of people saw the trailer and like, oh, it looks so cheap. But, but what you were reacting to when you saw that trailer was the frame rate was this was that it looked like a sitcom set but that's intentional it's supposed to look like a sitcom set the way the sitcom looked <laughs> yeah 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 never never let it be said that this is this, this is where rob zombie will air 
you know, like he never airs on the side of cynicism. Yeah. He will always, when he's doing something he really likes, he will always err on the side of trying to make it as much like that as possible. Oh yeah. Well, like it's it's like the, the sound quality, right? Yeah. I've seen a lot of people comment on the sound quality of the movie based on the trailer. And in the trailer, it's hard to tell, but when you watch the movie, oh no, this is like how they shot sitcoms back in the day. Yeah. You know, everyone's talking real loud and the microphone's a little further away because it's they're on a sound stage with 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 like a bunch of people in the audience watching or yeah. whatever. And so he recreates that sound that old TV shows had. Yes. You know, and it feels I was actually surprised it didn't have a laugh track. You know, well, yeah. It's the one thing it's missing, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> I think if you were to put this in black and white and add a laugh track, more people would get it. I think so too. Yeah. I think the fact that it is in color and there is no laugh track, people get confused. Yeah. But if you were to put it in black and white, put a laugh track, people would all of a sudden get what he's going for. Because I've seen the footage when people take it and just take the footage as is and put it in black and white and yeah. how, how good that looks, even better. Yeah. You're yeah, like, it's oh. really nice. You're like, okay, yeah, I, I see why why he wanted this to be in black and white. He even shot it like it was a black and white show. So Yeah, because like once you once you notice that, you start seeing everything that he's doing, mm -hmm. you start realizing like, oh, he's making the connection between the monsters and 60s monster kick culture. Famous monsters of film land yeah, kind of yeah. kind of stuff. And also like rockabilly culture. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. The the horror and rockabilly crossover culture. Yeah, exactly. Which if you're like us and you've been to a lot of conventions, like oh that is so clear. Horror rockabilly yeah. is like its own thing. And the monsters is one of the staples of that genre. Um if you like horror rockabilly, you're probably a monsters fan. Uh, he also puts a lot of Easter eggs throughout this. Uh, the whole movie isn't just Easter eggs strung together, but there's a lot of Easter eggs where if you're a big Monsters fan, you'll notice it. Yeah. Like throughout the movie, they go out of their way to make sure that Herman Munster is wearing various outfits he wore on, on the, show. the show. Yeah, right down to the like the rocker outfit that's pretty. Yeah, iconic. yeah. When he was in the when he was in the Drag Race episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, I was also really charmed by just the the core love story of this. It's a very cute, uncomplicated love story. Like it's love at first sight, but it's like, it's adorable. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. It's very, very simple. It suffers from some of the problems that the rest of the movie does where there's not enough of conflict, but at the same time, I was kind of enjoying not dealing with anything too serious watching this. Oh yeah. Like it was a nice little, 90 minute escape. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Like if you would like, like I could totally see like doing an entire series like this. Mm -hmm. You know, just going back to that old style of like episodic, you know, goofy sitcom. It would probably even benefit it to have like, like the 30 minute format where, yeah, where it's just a scenario that they have to deal with. And of course, like it's a 60 sitcom, so it can never get too dark or too serious. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Where it's just a little dumb and then problems are solved by like acts of God, basically, yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> this is circumstances that just happen to turn out. Okay. Because it's sixties America. And, yeah. Well, and we're it's... missing the fifties that never actually existed. Yeah. But... but I mean, like, you know, it like ends like it does on those television shows where it's just sort of like, well, I mean, like they get kicked out of the, out of the country club. It's like, well, you know, we didn't get in the country club, grandpa, but at least we don't have to look at their ugly faces anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we we enjoyed this movie. Um, we'll talk more in the spoiler section. I don't, there's not too much to spoil. There's not too to much to spoil. If you see like any couple episodes of the monsters, you know exactly. Yeah, what's going. we could spoil what like the plot stuff, I guess. But like that stuff honestly doesn't really matter to this. Movie. Oh no, not at all. Um, if I were to make some changes to the movie, it would just be a structure, struct, restructuring it to give it more of a plot to drive the actions within it. But. Yeah, yeah, like maybe do more with the like, Zora could have been more of an antagonist. Exactly, you know? because she kind of disappears halfway through, but she's the closest thing this movie has to an antagonist. Yeah. It is currently available on Netflix. Uh, go check it out, enjoy it, bring your kids. It's completely kid safe. Very, There's like, like very. Rob Zombie usually writes his these scripts full of like tons of swearing and like boobs and shit. Like there's none of that in this. There's one instance of someone on a television set swearing and they're censored. So yeah, that, that's, yeah. It. that's it. You know, the, the, the word that they censor is ass. Yeah, you know, yeah, and that's the extent of it. Somehow it is both Rob Zombie to the extreme while also being toned down from his usual behavior. Well, it's like, it's it's just, this is as wholesome as he gets. Yeah. This is him at his most wholesome. Well, also feeling like a pure passion project. For oh, him. yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. And with that said, let us move on to the spoilers. Not really a lot to spoil. Nah, okay, uh, so the plot of this movie, like, well, for what, it, there is a plot. The first half of the movie is just Lily and Herman meeting each other, falling in love, much to the chagrin of Grandpa that wants to, like, break them apart and hook her up with someone else. And then the second half of the movie is they lose their house, or Grandpa's Grandpa castle. Grandpa loses his castle. Uh, because Herman Munster is kind of dumb. Loses his castle to his ex-wife, Zora, and uh, they have to move to California and make that work. And that's kind of the second half of the movie. Th that's the plot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's not much to it. Mm -mm. You know, they lost it's, the house, they have to move. That's it's very episodic. Like you start off with like, oh, here's Richard Brake and he has to create Herman Munster. And then you move into the Herman Munster and Lily meeting each other, falling in love and grandpa trying to break them up. And then you move into the, now they're married, but Zora has managed to trick uh, Herman with the help of uh, Lily's brother to sell the house to her. Or at yeah, least yeah, it, yeah. It, it's it's very much, it feels very much like one of those, uh, like Disney after noon made for television movies yeah. for like DuckTales that get split up into five episodes. Exactly. You know? And so then that happens. It's like, oh no, now we've lost the house. And then, and then you run into the next scenario. It's like, well, let's move into a house in California because Herman wants to be a, a movie star. Movie star, yeah. Uh, because he was already a rock star in Transylvania and he wants to go and be a movie star. Which, by the way, the whole... Herman Munster being a rock star and then meeting Lily and falling in love. Low key, I think Rob Zombie was writing he and uh, Sherry, Sherry Moon. Moon. Sherry yeah. Moon's like life story. That's where you can also tell this movie feels a little personal. But oh yeah. <laughs> um, and, and then they moved to California. It's like oh shit. Well now we got to get along with these new people in California, and that's like the last twenty minutes. And like it's like sitcom scenario to sitcom scenario to sitcom scenario. There's not like a super driving through line between them. It just kind of jumps from one to the other. Yeah. And uh it, it's really weirdly wholesome along the way. <laughs> While also being the monsters and like having really awesome like horror stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot a lot of horror references. Yep. Like, particularly of the of the kind that like you know, it's very kid friendly. Yep. Going to vampire raves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, meeting the creature from the Black Lagoon. Yep. 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 You know? Yep. yep. God, was it like Cousin Uncle, Gil? Uncle Gilbert. Uncle Gilbert. Yeah. yeah Uncle Gilbert. And uh, a whole bunch of people wearing really bad Halloween masks um, because that's what it looked like yeah. on the sitcom back in the day. Well, it's, it's like the movie does this really weird thing, which is sometimes the masks are. They're supposed to be monsters to look like Halloween masks. Yeah, yeah. But then there's also that segment where people actually are wearing Halloween masks. Yep, yep. There's also uh, cool little Easter eggs throughout this, like various actors who are still alive from the original show show up as like voices in this. Yeah, either voices or like walk-ons. Like yeah. one of the uh, one of the actresses that played Marilyn shows up as a stewardess. And the guy who played Eddie on the original show is like the voice of the robot that marries Herman. Yeah, and Lily. yeah. <laughs> Horror hosts. That was the other thing. The oh, visuals yes, of this movie reminded me of. Very much so. If you've if you've ever watched like. Um, Zachary, uh, Zachary, or Count Gordeval, or, or uh, Cinema Insomnia, Cinema Insomnia, yeah. Elvira. If you ever watched any of those horror hosts and their shows, the way the sets look on this is like those shows. It is. They're yeah. intentionally cheesy. Yeah, they're, they're kind of cheap. They're kind of cheap, and b but they're also like gorgeous in their. Oh like, yeah, they're beautiful. Like you know, gaudiness. Like I don't know what else yeah. to call it. Like it's. <laughs> Well, it's all like, you know, like, you know, quick, get the beakers full of dry ice. Yeah, in yeah. There, you know? <laughs> and there's something really charming and endearing about it. And every set in this movie looks like that. Yes. Even like the more elaborate ones, which obviously they spent a lot of money on, uh, like the castle and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It looks like Count Dracula's castle, but like decked out with like 60s shit. Like, yes, you know? exactly. But yeah, like, like there's really not too much to spoil beyond that. Like the, the characters get into those scenarios and then the solution to the past scenario leads to the problem in the next scenario. That's basically the way the movie works. Very yeah. episodic, very simple. If yeah. And if you're, you just want to sit down and be like, <laughs> you get stoned, watch it and go like, I remember the monsters. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. Like movie. the best way to watch it is to like watch it with your kids or like that. Just like get stoned and just kind of enjoy it. Yeah. It's not, it's not deep. It's not supposed no. to be. It's a nice no. love letter to the old show. 
uh, take it or leave it. You yeah, know? yeah. I would totally watch an entire series. You know, I would. I would. You know, it would like be nice this. and chill. Yeah. You know, it would be kind of soothing to watch an entire show like this. Yeah. It's weird because, like, I understand why a lot of people didn't care for it, but I understand people hating it. Mm. This seems like normally this would be, if it wasn't for Rob Zombie, this would normally be one of those projects that mm, I think that people who are really, really don't like it would have just ignored. Well, yeah. Well, this is the thing. This is why I keep bringing up Popeye. Yeah. And um, Speed Racer. Because those movies were hated. Yeah. Like, but but if you were like a kid that watched them, yeah, you, you love loved them. <laughs> but the hatred seems to be tied into how earnest they are. Yeah. The fact that they yeah. are so earnest while also being so old hat and so kitsch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was, yeah, there's nothing that they did in that Popeye show mm -hmm. that they didn't do in like the fucking newspaper show. You can be cheesy and you can be like self-aware of it. Yeah. But if you're cheesy and earnest, oh God, good luck. I really like this movie. If you truly like, if you like horror hosts, if you like things like the Ernest movies or whatever. Yeah, if, or or if you like the original Monsters show. Yeah, like, you'll probably dig this. But anyway, my fellow Gorehounds, I liked it. And uh, I liked it. Oh, where can they find me? Yeah. Oh, you can find me on uh, Count Jacula at Count Jacula Jacula. Count Jacula Jacula on, hold on, Twitter. You can find Count Jacula on Twitter under Counting Jack. You can find <laughs> Count Jacula on Twitch under Count underscore Jacula. And you find Count Jacula on Instagram at Satanic Jacula. And what about you? Y'all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram, and Facebook. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blood Splattered Cinema, and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you'd like to help out either of us more directly, be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way. And if you made it this far into the vlog, then I want you to comment below and be sure to comment below using the hashtag slam in the back of my Dragula. Use the hashtag slam in the back of my Dragula. That way I know, that way Jack knows, that way the whole world knows you watch this vlog all the way through. And uh, I will catch y'all later. Peace out and I'll talk to you later.